Hello everyone, I'm Uchol at Samsung Research. I'm very pleased to have a chance to present our work, which name is Tweety, Social Listening for Threat Intelligence. As you can imagine from the title, in this work, we, we analyze threat data on Twitter. This is a joint work between Samsung Research and Korea University. In this presentation, I will talk about threat intelligence. Threat intelligence is uh, information about threat that helps mitigate harmful events. Indicator of compromise, shortly IOC, is a type of threat intelligence. Typical IOCs are IP addresses, file names, or MD5 hashes of malware, URL, or domain names of botnet CNC servers. They can be used to assist in the identification of a threat. For example, IOCs are used in security information and event management system to identify ongoing intrusion. Also, it can be used to, in the processing of threat hunting, which typically involve an investigation of evidence-based data after there has been a warning of a potential threat. Even though it has own limitations, such as um, inability to prevent unknown malware, threat intelligence's popularity continues to increase. There are various threat data sources. We can categorize them into public, private, search, and commercial. Recent work shows that regardless of its type, overlap of its data source is negligible. Therefore, public threat intelligence, sources, threat intelligence data sources are considered to enrich IOCs. Here are examples of public TI data sources. Social media, such as Twitter, Facebook, has threat-related tweets and posts. And we can think of security blogs operated by security vendors. They usually post on analysis reports of malware or attacks. Similarly, security news and developer forums are also public threat data sources. There is a work that shows Twitter is a promising public threat data sources for cybersecurity event detection. The figure shows that Twitter is largely the first source and sometimes the only source to discuss cybersecurity events. Not only in the academic paper, but we can also find there are security firms who claim that Twitter can be used as a threat data source. Their claim seems reasonable because people use Twitter as an information propagation platform. Actually, news media, security firms, and individual security researchers often use Twitter to quickly spread out their finding about cyber threat after publishing their original articles or reports on their sites. So, Finally, we have reached these two research questions. The first one is, does Twitter, does Twitter have valuable IOCs? The example of value are how many IOCs are on Twitter, how fresh they are, how accurate they are, how unique they are. To our best knowledge, we are the first group to examine the um, characteristic of IOCs on Twitter. Another question is, how to accurately mine IOCs from Twitter? Since Twitter is not designed for threat intelligence and existing systems that get IOCs from Twitter shows a low accuracy. We need a new method to mine IOCs from Twitter accurately. I will answer these questions through the proposed system and evaluation result. But before we jump into the detail, here is a simple and straightforward answer to the first question. In this table, um, both file hash and URL achieves above 93%. It means that Twitter can be, can be a reliable threat data source. Basically, we use VirusTotal as a ground truth for evaluating accuracy. Simply put, uniqueness is the proportion of IOCs that are only detected by Twitter. We can see that Twitter marks 63% exclusiveness for file hashes with respect to Alien Bolt ATX parts, and Twitter achieves 34% exclusiveness per URL with respect to virus total. It, tell, it tells that Twitter is not a redundant data source. The later, uh, latency column tells that Twitter has IOCs that are detected earlier than other threat data sources. It means Twitter has fresh fresh threat data as we expected before. Um, to answer the second question, we designed Twitter, which is a system that automatically extracts various forms of Mario IOCs from Twitter. 
Tweety consists of three parts, Tweet Collector and 11th Tweet Selector, IOC Extractor. The first part is a Tweet Collector. To maximize the number of IOCs to be collected, Tweety collects data primarily by keyword tracking using Twitter search API and secondarily by using tracking, user tracking using Timeline API. Examples of keywords are Mario, Lansomere, Spyware, Marspam, IOC, and so on. Tweety uses total uh, 35 keywords. Also, Tweety monitors 146 Twitter users who consist of 86% um, security expert, 12% security vendors, and 2% other security organizations. These users are selected based on our pilot study in November 2019. And here's some challenges. The challenges are a simple extraction of IOCs with pattern matching may cause many false positives. For example, a most tweet includes links for their own tweets or references. It is very difficult to distinguish whether these links are malicious URL or just benign links. Also, several tweets mentioning software versions match to, to, to IP pattern. And some tweets mention hashes for referring commit ID or blockchain transactions, which is matched for um, Mario hash. Therefore, to eliminate such cases, Twitter first handle links in tweets and then classify tweets to filter out those middle IOCs. Since shortened URL make too many noises, Twitter removes shortened links and checks if there is at least one IOC pattern in the tweet text. As you already have seen before, tweet, tweet examples in the previous page that are not related to the Mario. So we need to drop those tweets. We need a, a classifier that tells whether the malicious IOCs are in the tweet or not. And please read our paper for the detailed text processing step and how we build the Mario IOC tweet classifier. Uh, here is some little uh, information. As initial features, we consider defended IOCs. They prevent damage from unintended clicks. So it is a crucial hint for expressing IOCs. And we also consider contextual engram after feature selection. 1,456 features were retained. And you can see some of the, the selected features on the right side. And at the rightmost, this graph shows our curves of um, row distribution, random first, and X boost classifier. They all show good enough performance. And some things have an informative reference link. It means uh, we need to check shortened URL before dropping them all. For example, a link to URL house can provide us valid IOCs in their site because URL House is a service that shares malicious, malicious URLs. Um, the, this tweet example has no IOC pattern in its tweet text, so Twitter only checks a source of the shortened URL. In this case, uh, abc.com is not on our monitoring list, so Twitter dropped this tweet. The last part is IOC structure. This is a straightforward. After selecting the relevant tweets, there are two cases that Twitter needs to consider. In the first case, Twitter can find IOCs in the tweet text directly. In another case, Twitter should visit external data sources via extracted URL links and extract IOCs from their site. Examples of the external data sources can be on URL house and pastebin. To evaluate the performance of Twitter, we use four metrics, uh, volume, accuracy, exclusiveness, and latency. The table summarizes the reference sources we use for evaluation. Different IOC types need different references, so please read our paper. We ran Twitty on a daily basis over um, 97,000 tweets that we had collected by Twitty's tweet, tweet collector from February to April um, 2020. Twitter collected 32,000 file hashes over three months, where 20,000 hashes were collected in February, 5,000 hashes in March, and 6,000 hashes in April. A collection of notorious Mario hashes came through pastebin in February, though, except those exceptional days, 
421 file hashes were mentioned daily on average, and Twitter could collect 200 new file hashes daily on average during the evaluation period. Latency is a time difference between two reported dates, so it can only be calculated for IOCs detected by two feeds. The figure tells latency very intuitively. For hash, we consider alien board attack pulse and virus total. 8,508 file hashes were able, available to compare with alien board attack pulse. Among them, 5,000 and 94 file hashes, which is corresponding to almost 60%, were detected 3.5 days earlier than in alien board autics pulse on average. Also, we compare Twitty with BioStorer. Given the fact that BioStorer is contributed by 72 antivirus engines, it is truly amazing that Twitty collect Twitty could detect 815 file hashes earlier than virus total on average 1.2 days. These results show that Twitter is capable of providing fresh IOCs. Finally, accuracy is a very important property in determining whether this feed is reliable or not. We see that almost 93% of file hashes in Twitter were malicious, and only 0.03% were benign, and 7.11% percent remained unknown at the end of our experiment day. Nine sorry part is not bad, but we were curious about the unknown hashes, so we did a manual analysis on them. Among unknown hashes, 10.5% were reported by security vendors, and 12% were from analysis report of Mario analysis service like a hybrid analysis and URL house and 1.9% were reported by honeypot accounts. This means that they were suspicious enough, even though they weren't undetected by any engines in Virusora. So after integrating this result, we can say that the total accuracy is more than um, 90, 95%. In, this, in the paper, um, more interesting evaluation and measurement results are presented. You can find evaluation results on IP addresses, URL domain, and the way we set up the experiment. Also, you can find how many IOCs you can get by data sources and how many IOCs come from the commercial domain. Also, file type distribution of file hashes in Twitter is also presented, and you can find who the most valuable IOC reporter on Twitter is. Because Twitter relies on volunteered contribution of threat data from each user on Twitter if data is poisoned by malicious actors. Twitter's performance will be degraded. Even if this is the case, one way to block that fake information is malicious account filtering. And another limitation is if an external data source changes its data license policy, Twitter might not be able to collect them anymore. To foster research on this topic, um, we make Twitter available on GitHub. So um, we strongly recommend you to visit this URL, and there is more information on named entity recognition that is used in the text processing step, code snippets, and curated data such as keyword, author list, dictionaries for text processing are also in there. Also, you can find extracted IOCs during our experiment period, and some first positive analysis results on URL type IOCs. Thank you for watching my presentation, and please email me if you have any questions. I'm happy to take them.